Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our series on the F-16 through the ages, if you want to think about it another way. Today, we're going to be looking at the early F-16C model. Now, the C model is interesting because when people think of C models, they think of the one I always fly, uh, which would be the F-16CM Block 52. Now, the interesting thing is uh, it's not the only C model. And the scary thing with the C models is there's actually three big families of C models. Actually, if you even want to go further than that, there's only four or five C models if you want to get kind of technical here. Now, let's go ahead up the database real quick so I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm actually going to leave this going in the background here. So the first one you probably are familiar with is going to be the Block 25. Uh, this is the OGC, <laughs> if you want to think about it another way. This is the early, early version of the 25. And you notice it's actually 1985. Uh, if anybody's curious, I was born in 1985. If you want to think about how old this thing is, geez, getting old, right? Big changes. The radar is the ANAPG-68, which means it's no longer between your legs, which is much nicer between your lap, like I said last time. The other big difference is over this particular version, which I think is very, very cool, is I want to kind of scroll down here a little bit here. You will notice we've added a lot of different techniques. Uh, we still have like the Mark 82s and Mark 84s and everything along those lines, but our capabilities have significantly improved here. Again, we have the M model, the Sidewinder. We still have no AIM-7 or AIM-120. The second version that everybody thinks of as far as the early blocks is the block 30 and 32s. Now, not to confuse anybody, but the difference between a 2 and a not 2, well, you can see I have the 30s and I have the 32s here, is the engine. Anything that has a zero in it is powered by a, I believe it's an F-110, if my memory serves me correctly here. Let me go down here real fast. Uh, F-110, correct. Anything with a two is, I believe, uh, it's the F-100. Don't quote me on that. Let me check. Uh, bah, 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 bah. F-100. Yes, that's correct. And basically what they did is they designed it so if you're a zero, that means you're General Electric powered. If you are a two, you're Pratt and Whitney powered, good Connecticut, kind of a thing like that. Now, the reason that's interesting is you'll notice that that trend kept forever. So if you had a 42, for example, you could see that you know automatically, uh, if we were to scroll down here and see what engine it is, kind of a thing like that, it's going to be exactly what you could expect here. And again, it's the F-100. If it was a block 40, obviously it would be the F-110. Now, the interesting thing is that was the first big, big thing that changed when they got to the Block 30, which is what we're flying today. However, more importantly with the Block 30s, and now this is huge, is they added everybody's favorite magic bullet in 1992. So if I were to go, let me close this real quickly here. I'll grab my Block 30 here. Whoop, I closed like way too many of these screens. Eh, what happened to my screen? There we go. Ah, <laughs> got it. All right. So the big thing here is the 1992 edition added something fabulous. It added everybody's, like I said, silver bullets, which was the AIM-120. This thing is awesome. It is so, so, so much better. We also got the AGM-88. 1992 was a magical year for our F-16 buddies. So there's a couple things you'll notice right off. First of all, when I click on this one, you'll notice our new radar has a much better range of about 60 miles, and it's also got a slightly better field of view too, which is a big difference. You'll notice we had no difficulty identifying the naval target that was down there on the ground. Like I said, not our priority today, but we'll, we'll go wave at it. Hey, how you doing? But more importantly, because we now have the AIM-120, even though it's the A model AIM-120, speaking of A model 120, here's a huge mistake you can make. Do not fire the AIM-120 at its maximum range. At least fire it at half of its maximum range. Otherwise, you're going to be very, very disappointed. Like I said, we're still firing against more or less pure aircraft at this particular point. You're not going to be seeing R-77s for a while, so uh, you can enjoy the superiority of this particular weapon for a little while here. All right, so as in last time, uh, we're cruising here. I'm making our way through uh, General Electric Power. And again, like I said, we're Block 30s. Hey, we spotted something. It looks like there's some enemy aeroplanes over there. Pause. Let's go ahead and inconvenience them with our weapons. And I'm going to go ahead and hold this like that. Okay, everybody, you may ignore plotted course and uh, go ahead and <laughs> they all turn at the same time. That's a slightly terrifying. So huge improvements in radar capability here. Like we are, that's a long, that's 35 nautical miles away. Our MiG-29s here, which you probably knew if you saw the previous weapon, are they're going to be in for a world of hurt here. Uh, those AIM-120s, the A's aren't bad. We also now have the ability to crank and drag, which means we can fire and turn around and run. Any second now, the AIM-120s are going to come off the rail. Oh, here comes the MiG-29s. They're turning towards us. Uh, folks, uh, you don't want to waste any more time. You want to just fire one immediately. And the reason you want to fire one immediately is you want to get them to turn. Because if you can get them to turn, you can just come up right up behind them and finish the job. Off they go. I'd actually fire twice as many as that. Uh, we're actually going to fire one of those. And we're going to go here. And again, we get to we can drag immediately. 
Nice. And uh, we want to go ahead and notice. Now, remember before, our MiG-29s absolutely plastered our F-16s. And you can see they're doing a pretty good job of it this time, too. All right, you get one of these. We also have the M model of the Sidewinder now, which is really cool. Oh, boy. Oh, what a difference. Oh, it's over. It's over. <laughs> Unfortunately, we still have, uh, what are these guys? These are Alamo. Oh, those are ours. Don't even bother. They can't do anything to you. They just got to go right by. Whoop, that might not be an Alamo. Nope, those are Alamos too. Ooh, apparently those Alamos. Uh, oh, they're the T model Alamos. That's why. So unfortunately in that engagement, despite our efforts, despite our fabulous new weapons here, uh, we still got hosed as far as that goes. I'm going to press F1 now. I'm going to go ahead and target the MiG-21s. I'm going to let those guys go do that thing. All right, let's go to our seed and our deeters. So remember last time we had a really big problem where we stuck up on the enemy units and uh, they just basically started popping up those SA-2s at us and making quite a mess of things. Um, we're not going to have that problem this time. Uh, we now have the AIM-120s, which is going to totally change this game. Watch this. All right, so I'm just going to do one of these things. This is shift one. Okay, who's going to get picked on first? You get one. You get one. Oh, let's see here. You get one. Actually, you need two because these things are really dangerous. And you get two, two. And uh, we'll see what happens after the initial wee and firing kind of thing. Like that. This is a way. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my goodness. This is such a different fight when you can just pop those things off at these ranges. Now, keep in mind, we're actually not attacking the uh, fire control radar. We're actually going to be blasting at the um, uh, search radars, which, again, if you can put the search radars out of commission, you can make it much more challenging. Now, one of the cool things that usually happens here is uh, when you try to go after the search radars with harms, notice how high these things are flying. They're going to drop in from orbit in a second here. Here they come. Usually they flip on their fire control radars to try to shoot them down as they arrive. And this one's actually going for a fire can. So that might actually be a clean hit here. Nice. Oh, oh, ouch. Ouch. Ow. Ooh. Ow. Nice. And we already got somebody taking a pot shot at the gun dish there. Uh, you do not need to uh, turn away. I don't know why you're turning away. Why don't you come on back? We might need you again in a minute. All right, let's drop them down to about 25,000 feet loiter. Uh, they're just going to keep an eye on things as my A2G guys get in position. Meanwhile, notice we're already taking pot shots with the AMRAM. Actually, that's the early AMRAM. still going. Those early AMRAMs had really long range compared to their predecessors. Uh, let's see here. This is the A2G group. Ah, these are my strategic bomber guys. I'm going to go ahead right about here. Uh, we're going to drop down to, we'll do 15,000 feet here. No, no reason to be silly. 15, oh, 1,500 knots. That sounds good to me. Uh, 15,000 feet is what I want you to do. All right, they're going to go ahead and drop down. F2, I think I did that incorrectly. Uh, 15,000 feet is fine, and we'll do uh, 500 knots is plenty. 5,000 knots, that seems legit. What are you, where are you going? <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So now my strategic bombers, if you remember from last time, are basically going to get a cheap shot here. I'm a little nervous about the fact that there's a mobile unit and we have two SAM units uh, still probably pretty active. I don't think we actually did enough damage to them to put them completely out of commission. Uh, meanwhile, my A2A group here is uh, sneaking up on these MiG-29s, or 21s, I should say. It's going to be a short fight. So again, uh, we've done a little bit of work here. Uh, this guy's uh, coming into position, dropping down to a little bit kind of like a modern altitude. I'm trying to stay out of the way of this thing, but again, uh, we'll treat it just like we would normally my seed indeed crew here keeping an eye if anybody accidentally fires at any time um there will be a harm going right down your direction remember that's the b model of the harm too which is kind of the og one all right we're flying look at this what bombs away is that everybody empty Oop, a couple guys missed a couple bombs that's a good uh oh one of the sam's crews is still firing uh oh where were you guys when that happens uh you engaged defensive i'll be very offensive if you're engaged defensive so quick pro tip by the way Shut off auto evade on seed units. Otherwise, you get that kind of thing. So uh, you don't want to do that. All right. Anybody have a harm left? You got one. Uh, looks good to me. Why does this say do not use against this weapon? Eh, that's just me being silly. All right. They're going for that kind of chasing shot there. Uh, again, we're... Oh, no. We lost another one. Uh-oh. Is it going to get him? Is it going to get him? Oh, this is an SA-7. Like, you're going to hit an F-16 with that. <laughs> I didn't think so. Ah, it was the SA-7 that did the deed this time. Okay, that's fine. Fine with me. All right, let's swing back around. Uh, these folks, uh, I've declared that you've done enough damage here. I'm actually going to send you back home. And what is this? This is another SA-7. Yeah, that's not going to do anything. Uh, 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 uh. 
I was ready to be embarrassed. I was ready to be embarrassed. All right. Nice. Everybody go ahead and head home. I think our mission here is done. Let's go do this. Remember, this is the uh, block 30. This is the OGC, if you want to think about it. All right. Let's see our results this time compared to the A model. Rip. All right. Let's take a look. Whoa. <laughs> it's a little bit better. Uh, let's see. We got all their airplanes. Makes me feel better. Uh, we got the Grail, Expenditures. They got so fewer weapons off this time. Notice no SA-3s, no SA-2s. None of that left the rail. Notice they also got their F-16s. Our losses, three. So um, our losses have improved by one. Again, there were some inferior tactics going on here. We should have been much more aggressive with the AMRAMs. We should have fired them at 75, got them to turn, and then followed up with another one at half range. That would have been a vastly better strategy. It's more expensive, but it's also more thorough. Uh, we also only got a little bit of our bombs off here. Uh, we could have spent more time basically bombing the target. So as you can see, the improvements are incredible with this aircraft. Uh, one of the huge differences that you notice right away is that better radar allowed us to basically plink the M MiG-29. That being said, the MiG-29 still did a really good job. Those R-27s, the T-models, are actually stupidly effective, especially you know with a determined crew there. Now, one of the things we took a look at at the end of the last video is we actually went ahead and uh, utilized our bombs for the purposes of uh, striking our ship target here. And I see no reason not to do that this time. So I'm going to press F. Whoa, I didn't realize it was in God's eye view here. There we go. Engage. So we're, engage. So what we're going to do is we're going to let our go ahead and do a quick little bomb run here just because we can. And again, it's just it's incredible. That AMRAM totally changes the game. And again, that's the nice thing about this version. Now, believe it or not, there was an F-16 that could fire the Sparrow missile. Uh, for those of you who are big fans of um, uh, whatever I want to call it, uh, your Falcon BMSs and stuff like that, you're very familiar with this. But the reality is the U.S. Air Force didn't really do that. Now, if you want to see something really curious, and like I said, this is kind of neat, um, they actually had an F-16 variant that fired the AIM-C, um, uh, AIM-9C rather, and um, the reason I make fun of this thing every time is because it is the most absurd aircraft you've ever seen here. AIM-9C, ah, that's the one. Never was actually used, was hypothetical, but this is a radar-guided Sidewinder missile. And again, I had no idea what they were thinking that day, but I'm not going to argue with it because, hey, whatever works, right? All right, so let's go ahead and sneak down. Did you folks run out of fuel on the sign? F1 click. These folks really want to ignore my orders today. Well, that's okay, though. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Those guys are ripping home. This guy's got to drop some bombs on the way back. That's not going to work. <gasps> he just did a gun run. Look at this. Look at this. Burp. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think he got stuck on a mountain. Oh, I love it. I love it. They're doing gun runs on the OSA. That's fabulous. All right. So as you can see, um, again, the evolution of the F-16, so much better. Absolutely 100% better in every single conceptual way. But we're still in trouble in air to air. And uh, the reason that, of course, is because the enemy got some really good stuff from an air to air perspective. So it wasn't until kind of our later, later versions, but we'll get to that in another video. Enjoy.